Hey party people, so this was originally going to be a video showing my entire creation process for an SD page from beginning to end, but I accidentally lost the rest of it in a hard drive move, so it's only going to cover the thumbnailing part, so just ignore the parts later where I say that it's going to cover the entire thing because I'm a dingus, but I hope you like the rest of it. <laughs> Thanks. But right now I've got my blank canvas that I always start with. You can see that there's some dialogue from some uh, long ago page from Undine and HP, and it's called Zero Zero. So the first thing I always do is go in here and save it as the next page number. And this is in here just uh, for sizing and stuff to make sure that all of the text is always the same proper size. And the border, I've talked about this in a previous video, though I should probably make new versions of all those. But it's a layer with an inner stroke so that when I delete the gutter space, it automatically makes the panel borders. So what I usually do is I'll pull up the previous page, because that's going to be important for reference, and I'll make another window for this to put off to the side on my other monitor so I can see what it looks like zoomed out. And then this page is an interesting one because it's going to take a lot of dialogue, and so I think it might actually be a five tier, you know, like this is a four tier page. And it's probably gonna be a lot of headshots, because one, because it's kind of a weird tense scene where a lot of people are gonna be saying a lot of things, so I think that's efficient and will kind of help stress, you know, this kind of back and forth feeling. And also then because it's easier to draw and I don't have to draw as many backgrounds, which like the panels like this, it's not very impressive, but it takes way longer than it should. <laughs> so. Usually I'll, I'll be like, okay, what all do I have to get done in this page, right? So I'm thinking, okay, so they have to all show their reactions to her asking this question, which I, I have in mind, but I need to figure out exactly how they're going to word it. And meanwhile, someone has to actually answer her question. <laughs> and people were wondering, like, how did Bud end up bringing her over here without having already been asked that question? So that's one of those things that because I make the comic page by page, I can try to clarify a bit with Bud's dialogue. So I figure Bud will speak first, and she'll say something like, uh, I, I knew Cassidy was missing today, so I figured that was what this was about. Oh, I, I, I knew. Obviously, one of her little birds told her. I figured you'd all want to be part of this conversation. You know, something like that. That's the fun part, is uh, figuring out the best way to fit it into a bubble. Especially when it ends on a kind of long word like conversation, but in this case, it works okay. So, I'm actually going to drag this panel over to the side as well. So, I'm going to put this in my text area, in my text folder. And so, if I end up doing it five tier, or actually, see, I want to establish that Bud is putting her tray down on this table. And it's probably good to also show Letty and Harley in this panel. So I would do something like Harley will be down here, I guess. And, and we'll show the table. And Harley's tray is here. And Bud will be putting her tray down like here. And then maybe I'll actually do it like this. Oh, but then that will be blocking Letty. Hmm. Yeah, Bud, right? This is the most basic idea of so just putting her tray down. Plonk. <laughs> and Letty's here like, mm, awkward conversation. She'll probably put both of her hands in her pockets now. She'll have to be like kind of leaning over the chair. Or maybe she'll have one hand on her chair and one hand putting it down. I'll figure that out when I actually do the pencils. It'll be like the windows back here. And maybe I'll break this up like this. <laughs> and then and then Letty will be like, so is that a yes or... <laughs> Question mark. I need to figure out who I would... I, I guess she should be looking over at Bud. Wait, that's not correct. It's over here. Meow. So is that a yes or 
and then I want to beat to show that they're having, you know, some awkwardness in answering her question. Because, <laughs> obviously, they're not quite sure what to say about it. So, um, have Harley like this. Like, uh... And Vedika is pretty honest and, and concerned about her, obviously. So, maybe she'll be the one to answer. Since there's a, page, a previous page where all these girls are talking and they all have their own text bubble color, I'm just pulling the dialogue over from there, so I don't have to color picker it. Yes, she came to the club last night. Actually, maybe Harley doesn't actually have to be in this panel, so I can fit more dialogue. Sorry, Harley, bye. Get out of here. So, so it's just Medica, and she's like, yes, she came to the club last night, but... Dot, dot, dot. So you know it's because she got her glazes. <laughs> I don't always bother to distinguish who they are in the thumbs because usually I'll remember thanks to their text color or you know what they're saying in general. So then if I do an Could I do this many? That'd be crazy. But depending on how I lay the dialogue out, that might not be too crazy. We'll see. Okay. There's a lot to get done this page. <laughs> This is the kind of page where I wish that I could do um, almost like visual novel style inserts, like Homestuck or something, just to get a lot of dialogue in without drawing their faces over and over. So, uh, she came to the club last night, but... Obviously, Bud is the best at talking to people about various drama things, so I think she would kind of take charge and be like, There was an argument. The details aren't super important. But we ended up splitting off early. We ended up splitting up early and splitting, I don't want to say up twice. <laughs> One of the problems with Bud is of course you can't show her looking in a different direction from where she's facing since her eyes are that kind of uh, fox eye, always closed. You know, trying to convey a little mood with like the way that she's even like tilting her head and whatnot. Body language. It's important stuff. And then since, especially since we haven't gotten to really see like Harley's expression since this news has been found, give her a chance to talk and be like, we just assumed she was going to meet up with you guys. I'm wondering if I want to do like, hmm. <laughs> Usually the pages aren't this hard for me to thumbnail out, but this is one of those things where I need to convey a lot of reactions and ideas and it's a difficult page to do correctly. So I'm wondering if I want to have her go up an argument? And then Bud's word, word bubble will kind of sneak around her. And maybe I'll end up zooming those out a bit. Oh, we just assumed. <laughs> we just assumed she was going to meet up with you guys. And then it's time to cut to HP and Undine. Because obviously they're having various feelings. Oh, HP actually didn't speak last page. I forgot about that. So... I need to open up my swatches, where I have swatches for all the different girls' speech colors. And it's like, is it possible she went to... She's at different family member or something? You know, the general kind of thing you try to think about if uh, someone goes missing. Trying to figure out who she should be looking at. I think she's probably looking at Undine. <laughs> she worried. But she's not asking the question specifically to Undine. So I think uh, her body will be not facing towards Undine, but her eyes will be facing towards Undine. I'll try to help convey that idea. Undine's just looking down because she's like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> Look at this weird looking go girl. I'm so not used to doing this with, uh, you know, while I'm talking or, or where people could see. 
I feel so naked with my sketchy thumbs. I don't know. We're back with Letty. We're teammates, but we honestly, but we never talked all that much about personal stuff. But come back in. I assume or the CDD, City Defense Department, is looking into that. And Vedika, just be like, you don't think dot dot dot, <laughs> you know. It's like, is it too awkward for someone to say, oh no? Hmm. There was an argument, it's a little too. I think this is a little too unnatural. I think that we had an argument. An argument that you have to say. She was really upset, dot dot dot. I want to show Undine's hand because in this panel, Kokoro is going to to grab her hand in a um, kind of attempt to comfort her. But I'm trying to decide whether I want it to be on the table or on her lap. I think it's on the table. Can be grabbing it. You know, trays over here. Then I'm gonna have to take some uh, reference photos of this to to draw this hand right. We got this hand, and then Kokoro will be grasping it. That, that's what's here. That's what that's I'm drawing right now. You can, you can tell, right? It's beautiful. <laughs> Alright. How many panels is this? Jeez. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, not that crazy. Alright. So then what I do now is I will lower the opacity of the layout and start creating the panels with... What is this? Box... Box selection? Shape selection? And as you can see, I'm not super precise about how big the gutters are or anything. I just kind of eyeball that. And some of these panels, I might start doing that thing I've been doing late, more lately, where there's just white behind them. Especially because you don't really need backgrounds for a lot of these. I might look back here. Hmm. Yeah, like, I think this panel might make a nice... I'm sure there's a word for that. Cutout panel? See, if it was a manga, they almost always have a panel that's like going off the edge like this, but I never know when to do that kind of thing. And, and then I have to increase the canvas so that I can have a bleed panel and it's a whole thing. I think I'll actually have more room for... This panel has a lot of word balloons. Yeah, I think that's good. So then, just so I can get rid of a layer effect because those always make the program run slower, I'm filling... You know, I just did the fill tool on another layer to actually make a layer that's just the borders. So now I got a borders layer that's all good. And then so the next step would be to actually put in a lot of my word balloons, some of which I might not do depending on how confident I am in their layout in relation to the pencils that I'm going to be doing. But generally, so... I'll create a selection, and I have another thing that I want to remake my video tutorial that I think I did a long time ago on is how I made this custom shape for the word balloons. But then I... this is Bud speaking. And I hit the... in the pass window I hit stroke. Okay, stroke and path so that it becomes the balloon.
And then once I have the pencils, I'll just go ahead and draw in the bubbles with the pencil tool, like, you know. Of course, I have to draw, I have to turn the opacity setting off. Gotta get the color for her text. kind of want to make this touch the panel above it, but I don't want your eye to be led di directly from that panel to this panel. So I might go ahead and scooch this word balloon. I might go ahead and have it attach over here, just to make it easier for your eye to flow from the first panel dialogue to this dialogue. Mm. Eh, I'll decide later if <laughs> I like that or not. You know what? No, I don't like it. I'll, I'll take the chances. <laughs> I'm probably a little too paranoid about that kind of thing sometimes, but I like to make things flow as smoothly as possible, especially if I'm messing around a bit with exactly how I'm doing the panels. Connection for this one. Weep. 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 Yeah, good enough. the bubbles in there. And then it's time for the hard part, which is the pencils. <laughs> 